Good morning. I'm Bernie Finkel, Master Stewart with the McDowell Sonoran Conservancy. We're here at Brands Ranch this morning to discuss how the Native Americans use their plants for medicinal purposes. One question I'm always asked is, how did the desert people know which plants were medicinally useful from those that could be potentially dangerous or medicinally useless? Native Americans were closely connected to the land. Consequently, this connection gave them insight as to how animals reacted to different plants, as well as a knowledge of when plants would be at their optimal growing season and phytochemical strength. They may have also interchanged their knowledge of healing plants with other people. The bottom line is that this knowledge was acquired over a long period of time by a careful process of trial and error. Plants are rooted and cannot flee from their predators or find mating partners. As a result, they produce secondary plant compounds to repel those that endanger them and to attract those that will pollinate them. There are four main classes of secondary plant compounds. Alkaloids, which are powerful compounds containing nitrogen, which are found in many of our medicines. Glycosides, which produce compounds that contain a sugar molecule and can have a medicinal or poisonous effect. Phenolics, which are compounds that have antiseptic properties to prevent microbial attacks and terpenes, which are essential oils and resins which attract pollinators and repel insects. In their capacity as food, desert plants provided a form of preventive medicine because of their low glycemic effect, antioxidant, vitamin and mineral, and fiber properties. Desert plants were effective against diseases such as diabetes, high LDL cholesterol, high blood pressure, and other deficiencies caused by an insufficient diet. Major diseases and their symptoms were normally treated by teas, infusions and decoctions, and poultices, masses of moist and sometimes heated material made from various parts of the plant. For first aid medical treatment in the field, Desert plants provided aid for cuts, infections, burns, bites, and stings. They also provided splints for broken or fractured limbs and crutches to aid in walking. The most important medicinal plant to the people of this region is a creosote bush. The resin on its leaves contain more than 100 chemical compounds, including a powerful antioxidant, NDGA, which has powerful antibiotic and antiseptic properties. When used as a mild tea, creosote helped boost the immune system of the Native Americans because of its powerful antioxidant properties. Illnesses such as arthritis, tuberculosis, bladder infections, rheumatism, and even skin cancer were treated with strong teas from the plant. Ultices of creosote were also used as an antiseptic dressing for cuts, bruises, and sores. The consumption by the Native Americans of young prickly pear pads aided in the prevention of diabetes and the reduction of LDL cholesterol levels. The fibrous and mucilaginous pads contain high levels of amylose, starch that breaks down into simple sugars at a much slower rate than the other starches. This helped mitigate the insulin spike created by the consumption of sugar. The prickly pear pads was an invaluable first aid tool for the people in the field because of its ability to draw out liquids and soothe the skin. A pultice was prepared by removing the spines and glockids from the pad and splitting it in half. 
It was effective in drawing out venom from snake and insect bites, as well as pus from infections. The soothing juice of the pad was used as a lotion for minor rashes, sunburn, and windburn. The jojoba is a dioecious plant, having individual male and female plants. The leaves of both are highly astringent and anti-inflammatory. They were used in a tea to treat gastrointestinal disorders. The female plant produces a nut that contains a liquid wax that closely resembles sebum, a compound found in the human body that aids in the lubrication of skin and hair. Nuts were ground up and applied as a shampoo or prepared as a salve for skin use. The unripened green jojoba nut was chewed in order to relieve the pain of a sore throat. The jojoba nut contains simoncin, a unique chemical compound which was used as an appetite depressant in the field. Mormon's tea, unlike its Chinese cousin, which contains the powerful alkaloid stimulant, phedrin, as the milder pseudoephedrine in its phytochemistry. A tea prepared from the stems made an effective remedy as a bronchial dilator for hay fever, mild asthma, and allergies. The tea was also used to relieve low blood pressure problems. Its traditional use was to relieve kidney and urinary tract inflammation and pain. Its roots were dried, made into a powder, and applied topically to all kinds of sores, including those caused by syphilis. The most important food plant in the Sonoran Desert was the mesquite. All parts of the mesquite contributed to the medicine cabinet, the Native Americans. Mesquite pods helped stabilize blood sugar levels and made a good anti-inflammatory eye wash. Mesquite leaf tea was used in treating bladder infections and gastrointestinal problems. Dried leaves ground into a powder with water added made an effective eye wash for sore eyes and pink eye. The black gum sap tears help relieve the symptoms of chapped lips, rashes, and sunburns. It was also used as a hair dye. White ratney is a semi-parasitic plant whose roots have highly astringent properties. A deep red tea was made from the roots and was used as a mouth rinse for gum disease and a gargle for sore throats. White ratney differs from the other astringent plants in that its astringency remains throughout the entire length of the digestive tract and help relieve diarrhea, hemorrhoids, and bleeding colitis. The powdered root was used as a topical hemostat and it was also applied to the umbilical area of a newborn to keep it infection free. In the early spring, in areas that have been affected by fire and flood, large populations of a bright yellow daisy-like flower begin to appear. That flower is the brittle bush. Along with the flowers would come an amber-like sap which would ooze out from the stems and twigs of the plant. Several weeks later, the indigenous people would begin to gather the hardened sap. These sap tears have decongestant and expectorant qualities. When powdered and mixed with animal fat or beeswax, the concoction helped to break up phlegm and ease the problems caused by a bronchial infection. The leaves and stems of the plant have pain-killing and anti-inflammatory properties. A tea was prepared for treating arthritic conditions aggravated by a cold and damp winter. The tea was also used as a mouthwash to alleviate tooth, gum, and sore throat pain. Several times a year, the ocotillo thrust its fiery nectar-laden red-orange blossoms into the desert sky. Ocotillo is the Spanish diminutive of the Aztec word ocatl, meaning little torch. The blooming ocotillos were a welcome sign for the migrating hummingbirds, as well as the Native Americans who prepared a restorative tea from the blossoms. A tea made from the roots 
was used for fatigue, swollen and tired limbs, as well as a medicine for coughs. A poultice of powdered root also relieved painful swelling. The outer bark of the ocotillo was made into a tea which stimulates lymphatic movement in the lower body. It is used internally to treat varicose veins, benign prostate enlargement, and poor pelvic circulation. Chia, a member of the Mint family, originated in southern Mexico around 2600 BCE. The Aztecs, Tarahumara in northern Mexico, many of the tribes in the Colorado River Valley use chia as a high-energy food on their marathon runs and marches for trade and warfare. Chia seeds have special properties that contribute to the health and well-being of the Native Americans. It is the highest grain source for all of the essential amino acids which are easily digested and absorbed into the body. Chia is the richest natural source of omega-3 and an excellent fiber food source. Chia seed has a unique property. The seeds can absorb 10 times their weight in water, helping to maintain hydration and electrolyte balance in the human body. The gel that is created in the interaction between the seeds and water create a physical barrier between the carbohydrates and the digestive enzymes and help to reduce the sugar spike after eating food by slowing down the digestive process. In the field, chia seeds were placed into the eye to help remove irritating particles. Seed pultices were placed into wounds to stem infections. In this video, we only scratched the surface of the desert plants that were used for medicinal purposes in the preserve. I would like to recommend a book which will give you an historical insight as well as botanical information on these medicinal plants. Healing with Plants in the American and Mexican West, Margarita Arschwager K., printed by the University of Arizona Press, 1996.